Hello everybody, <coughs> Michael Biardi here. I'm here to tell you about this uh, fabulous kit. This, uh, this fab fabulous kit which will help uh, make this damaged area here on this car uh, look uh, quite unnoticeable. So I'm going to start today and I'm here today to help you add value to your car and save dollars by using one of these uh, automotive touch-up paint uh, brush touch kits. This kit here is uh, kit code uh, BDKW37 which is uh, a total paint maintenance kit um, <coughs> and uh, with this kit uh, we're going to be able to repair uh, plastic uh, panels and uh, metal panels and uh, take care of some rust that's here, treat the rust. Then we're going to repair the clear coat because this is a metallic finish and uh, you, you need clear coat. If it had it been a solid uh, finish, you would only use the uh, color, there'd be no clear. Although the clear does come in handy uh, on some colors uh, when it's used on some solid colors, um, it's a lot less noticeable if you use the clear. So, uh, but for this, this, this type of scratch today, we've got everything that we need right in here. Um, I'll just give you a little look what you got there. You've got all these, uh, you know, um, utensils there that you can use. You get gloves, uh, polishing cloths, a little bit of uh, a cloth there, clean up cloth, um, the blemish remover, and all the other items there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start And start this repair by cleaning up uh, some of the impact residue that has landed on this. So whatever's hit it has left its mark on there. And what we're going to do, we're going to uh, use what's, this is the item called clean up. And uh, it's, it's a solvent. And uh, because that, uh, that impact residue there to me it looks like it uh, may come off with the uh, solvent being a nitrocellulose product. Um, this product here will be able to uh, clean that off hopefully and uh, just clean it up now. So just squirt a little bit of that on there like so. And we'll just massage that trying to get that mark off. So it's not a nitrocellulose product, so we're going to need uh, the blemish remover, which is a cutting agent, possibly to get that off. We'll just clean all that area there. You've got to uh, test this product first on your car and make sure that your car is not painted in uh, you know, acrylic lacquer because you can really make a, uh, a big mess of things. But uh, we'll do that there. Clean all that up there, like so, with that product. It doesn't seem to be moving the, uh, the impact residue. And I'm kind of like using my nail to scrape it a bit. My fingernail, that is. And some of it's coming off. I want to try and get that off rather than paint it. Uh, it's always the best thing. So a bit of persistence, you'll see that the marks do come off. You can see that there, it is coming off and that impact residue uh, uh, already that uh, this area here is starting to look good a lot of the time you've got to actually put the solvent on there and just wait a couple of minutes so it softens and that's what's going on here it's actually coming off there we have it that impact residue has come off with a bit of persistence and a bit of solvent okay Moving right along now. So we've cleaned up all the impact residue. And we're going to go, according to the instructions manual that comes with this kit, uh, you need to follow the manual uh, precisely to be able to get a, uh, a very good job. If you don't read this manual, um, I don't think you'll be able to get a, uh, a good job and it'll probably come out shonky. So it's important to have a read of this even twice. So we'll move right along now, 
I'll just put that aside because I already know the uh, instructions. So I'll put that right aside there. And what we're going to do next in our kit, uh, what we've got here is, like I said earlier, that there's a, a, uh, a plastic part and then there's a metal part. And uh, we need a, a, a plastic primer for the colour to stick on the plastic. And then we need a, a metal primer to, to uh, um, sit over this area here where it's bare metal. It's actually rusted, so before we put the primer on, we're going to need to treat that rust and uh, clean it up and then treat it and then keep going. So what we'll do now is we'll use this uh, blemish remover to polish out uh, some of those light scratches and uh, clean up some of the dust and the uh, residue of the rust on there. This is a fine G2 cut and it shouldn't cut, uh, it shouldn't uh, scratch the paint whilst working with it. So we'll just put a little bit on there, make sure there's ample on there, otherwise it won't do what it's supposed to do. And we'll just massage that. It's a cutting agent so you need to polish things up. Use a polishing motion. And we'll just clean all that area up there, like so. The more persistent you are, uh, the better the, uh, the job will come. So we'll just, I think I might just do that twice actually, and try to bring that up nicely. So we'll put a bit more again, uh, and we'll just go over that again. Just go over that whole area there, making that whole area nice and neat. And polishing it all up. Let's get that good rub. Starting to look good now, already. Wow, what a difference. So I'll do that there. And there we have it there. Already that's starting to really look good now. Uh, we'll just polish that up there. Like so. Okay, what we need to do now is treat the rust. The uh, if we don't treat that rust and we just coat it with primer or even colour, it'll continue to rust. You need to treat it. So we'll use the uh, stop rust item in the kit. We'll give that a good shake. And we're going to apply this, this uh, stop rust onto just that rusted area. Be sure to put it just, just where it's rusted, don't put it on the good paint. So we'll put that on there like so. Just one coat, just treating that, just that area. I should really have my gloves on. Uh, these things do get a bit messy, so we'll just quickly pop these on. I should have put them on earlier. I'll put those on there. Like so. And we'll continue with that uh, little touch up there that we're doing. Like the end of that brush, sometimes it gets stuck because they've got glue. So we'll just break that up. I'll put one little coat here. Now put it just where it needs it, where the rust is, nowhere else. Now that usually takes around about two to four hours to dry, uh, but what we're going to do for the sake of this uh, video, so I'm going to get my dryer and express dry that so it's dry enough to, uh, to uh, recoat. So I'll be back at a jiffy. not to over, overheat this thing because it's quite easy to, uh, to to burn a good paint. So we'll just put a little bit of heat on it just for a minute. Put that down up here like so. Okay and what we'll do is while we're waiting for that to dry
while we're waiting for the rusted item to dry, we'll put on the plastic primer on the plastic part. Most bumper bars on cars these days are plastic, so you can bet you're going to need plastic primer. So what you do is, you, you get the plastic primer, which is a clear uh, looking uh, uh, liquid, and you apply it just, oh, I've put a little bit on there. You've got to be careful, but it's quite easy to do to make that run. You've got to really squeegee the, uh, the brush and just do a little bit of a dip because it's quite liquidy. And then we'll just put a little bit just on the plastic item where the paint's missing, only on that and nowhere else. Okay, so the primer's down there and over here. Keeping it just on the black area. Don't put it on the good paint. It doesn't need it there, so you shouldn't be putting it there. Now, I'll just go out the heater again and we'll just heat all that up and dry it. Again, not too much heat. You can tell when the, uh, the plastic primer has dried because it, it looks flat looking, there's no gloss. And you can tell when the rusted item is dry, the anti-rust is dry, uh, when it turns purple, a brownish, purpley looking colour like it has there. Okay, now that, that's looking pretty good, that repair so far. Uh, what we'll do next is, we'll, um, we'll, we're going to want to repair the clear coat. The clear coat on this, being a COB from factory, that means it's got its colour and then it's got its clear. It's got its electrostatic coating, of course, then the colour, then the clear. And when a scratch happens, such as this one, uh, usually there's impact residue, scratching in the clear and scratching in the colour. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to repair the clear coat first and then we're going to repair the colour coat. And then if you wish to, you can reapply clear over the colour to give it that gloss effect. Now, uh, when, when an impact happens, it actually hits the clear first, scratching all the clear, but not necessarily going down to the colour and then going down to the colour uh, as the scratch progresses. So, um, in other words, don't use uh, the paint colour, don't use your paint colour uh, to fix your clear coat. If you do that, you're just going to make the thing look worse. You need to repair the clear coat with the clear, you need to fix the colour coat with the colour, you need to um, you know, treat the metal, you need to put the proper primers on, you need to clean up impact residues, you need to do all these things in order to make that repair uh, go you know, quite unnoticeable. Well, of course it's going to be there, but um, it'll be unnoticeable. Uh, uh, you know, your eyes will pass by it. Only if you really look, you'll see it. So we're going to uh, repair the clear coat now. Now, just get the brush out of the uh, kit. This, this brush comes in the kit. And we'll just break up the end of it so it's loose like so. We'll give our clear a good shake and we're going to uh, apply one light coat of clear. The viscosity of this clear or the, the thickness of the clear is quite thin so you can actually work it. There's a way to do it. If you uh, pay attention to my stroking uh, action you'll be able to see that we're actually stroking the clear and, and moving it all around. So we're putting a dollop on there and then moving it all around. And when that dries, that should dry flat. When the solvent dries out, it should dry reasonably flat and uh, again, going uh, quite unnoticeable. But uh, with the clear, only put it where you can see the whitish looking scratches. If they're definitely black and you know that they're definitely gonna need color, then I'd recommend that you, uh, you, you, uh, you go just on the clear and not put uh, uh, you know, clear on the primer, there's no need for it. So we'll just do that and uh, we'll just go around it there. You can see those scratches disappearing now. Now I'm trying to keep as, as close as I can to the scratch without going over the scratch. Now you can see those scratches disappearing. I'm not putting it on the uh, black, try not to put it on the black. Again, uh, you know, if you make a mistake, you've got the clean up item in there with that little blue cloth. Uh, you can actually uh, take everything that you have done off. The only item that won't come off, or that would need to be sanded off, would be the, um, the rusted item. 
sort of like uh, dries like a fiberglass type of resin and uh, it doesn't allow the anything to you know get in contact with the metal stopping the rust you see because the oxygen and the water makes it rust so you can see that that, that scratch is going and it looks quite good okay just paint the clear over right there and over those scratches That's becoming quite invisible there, and it's looking good. Now, if you're not sure about a scratch, whether it's a clear scratch or a colour scratch, always uh, use your clear first in any case. If you can manage to get rid of it with a clear, you're a lot better off. So we'll put that clear away, and we'll add a little bit of colour to that. Now, what we should have done really is when we put the primers on, we should have done this hadn't there been rust, but because there was rust. Now we've actually fixed the clear coat before we've actually fixed the, uh, the clean cut scratch. Now it doesn't really matter which order you do the layers, the idea is to repair each layer. And while you're waiting for one thing to dry, you may be doing another action. And that's a good way to work so that you can complete it quickly. Uh, when you're doing this application around the whole car, you would start with a blemish remover around every scratch around the car. You wouldn't do one scratch at a time, it would take you forever. You'd need to do the way it's designed and in the instructions is you start with the first item and you go around the car. So the first thing that you would do would be take off uh, your, your uh, impact residues using your cleanup. Um, the second thing would be your blemish remover. Uh, the third thing would be uh, your rusted item, the fourth thing would be your primer, uh, metal primer and uh, plastic primer, then the clear, then the colour, and then the clear again over that clean cut scratch. So what we'll do now is we're just putting primer just where it needs it on those up. Oh, see, now I've got to make a little bit of a boo-boo there. Okay, so I'm just going to clean that little bit of primer there because that's metal primer. For metal. See, everybody makes the mistakes and uh, they're easily fixed. So we've got the clean up there. Now we'll reapply a little bit of plastic primer there. It won't take too long to dry. And just put that plastic primer back on there because we don't want the colour to peel off once it's done. So we'll do that while that's drying. Uh, we'll touch up this metal section where the rusted is. It's the only bit of bare metal I can see. Um, it's a good idea to put primer where paints are missing because it gives you a better paint level. So we'll just do that there like so. Just give it one little coat there just to do the, uh, the rusted thing. Um, and now we're going to move on to the colour coat. So we'll give that a good shake. Heat that up a little bit. I always like to apply a little bit of heat, it makes things uh, dry faster. But again, be careful not to burn the good paint, it's quite easy to do. So we gave that a good shape. Now we're going to check the colour and make sure that the colour's right before we start painting everything. So we'll just put a little dollop on there, just to see if that is indeed the same colour. And, and it looks like it is. It is a, uh, a factory OEM colour. So straight off the uh, factory formula, factory products, um, the colours are usually pretty, uh, are pretty good. Sometimes we have a variation, um, but so not that it's anything that will be noticeable in a brush touch. So we'll just paint that in there like so. All those things that are discoloured is what we're painting today, the discoloured section. It's going to need two coats, 
the uh, you know the body of this colour is not uh, very dense, so it is indeed going to need two coats. Uh, some of those whites and reds and that they're high pigment, they're HP, and they cover in one coat. But this here is going to uh, need two coats, two to three coats, possibly. So we just do that there, like so, covering in all those little areas, and only put the paint where it needs it. Like, that's a very fine scratch. And I'm just going to use the edge of the brush to, to, to brush it in. So those very fine ones, you just put a little dollop, just, you couldn't even tell that it was there, but you've actually hit the uh, scratch. Now, I just, you know, this way here, so the paint runs downwards. Okay, I'll just put the first coat in there, like so. Yeah, that, that load your brush up too much, that way you haven't got too much to worry about uh, when, it, when it gets on there, it won't run. You just fill that in there, like so. We'll go from the top again if we can. Now, you can see I've put too much on there. So again, with the clean up, just give it a little bit of a clean. see quite clearly the, uh, the paint on my hands and on the bottle. Not to worry about that sort of stuff because we've got the clean up there and uh, we'll be able to clean up when it's time to pack up. Yeah, that's all run to one side so I'm just spreading it back around as it's drying. Okay, that's looking quite good actually. I'm just going to get some of that uh, drip, a drip here going on. It's actually called like a curtain where the paint pools in one side. And I just want to take that pooling because we're working on the side here and uh, bring it bring it back up into the scratch as it dries. So there's a little bit of a black mark there that didn't come off. I'll touch that up as well. Yeah, I'm going for the second coat. It's already skin, skinned over. It's a nice day today. And it's skinned over that colour quite nicely, um, almost straight away. Because of the weather. Had it been cold weather, um, you'd probably definitely uh, be waiting in between coats and uh, otherwise be using a, uh, a dryer, such as that dryer there. It's a little bit like a hair dryer. Okay, that's coming quite neat there. It looks tidy coming up quite well. Let's just tie in all that up. There. We just put a little bit down here. Again, that's pooling on that, that scratch, so we're going to fix that in a second when it starts to dry. do is I'll put a little bit more heat on it so it dries. And then we'll unpool this area here. When that dries and the solvent dries out of it anyway, it does lie down. It lies down flatter. section here another coat now. Now there's a lot of little fine, fine, very fine scratches. You could choose to get the big brush and brush all that in um, 
but uh, we wouldn't recommend that. Um, a lot of the time, scratches like that go unnoticed anyway. They're very, very fine. And uh, upon close inspection, uh, you can see them, but um, you know, uh, 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 from a reasonable distance, you can't see them. So we don't try and touch them up because uh, in actual fact, you can again make them quite worse. So they're the very, very fine type of scratches. So we'll just give this here another coat here. Now that scratch has almost disappeared, that scratch. Remember to keep the colour just uh, on the places that need colour. If the paint's good, try not to put paint on there. So second coat here now. It's all in the brush technique, the strokes, how much paint's on the brush. You've got to be able to judge that quite well. Try it on a piece of uh, panel before you do your own car, just to see what the result's going to be and how each product works. But there we have that there. That is almost complete, that repair now. And as good as it's going to be for, for a brush touch. So from a distance again, from a reasonable distance, uh, you shouldn't be able to uh, see it too much. It should go uh, quite unnoticeable. Now again, this bumper bar has had a hit from the front um, and it's pushed in and it's got a bit of a gap. But again, we're just trying to do something which is cost effective and keep the car looking tidy. There we go again, that, that's just brilliant. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean this up now with our clean up, because I don't like a dirty, uh, a dirty uh, uh, paint kit. I like to keep my kit in nice order so I can use it next time. The kit will last you for, you know, a minimum of 12 months, uh, the, the products. And uh, if you keep them in a cool, dry place, they'll, they'll actually uh, last a lot longer. Some people have kept them in their, in their fridges, the second fridge. So we just clean all that up so it's nice and clean. While we're waiting for the clear to dry, because uh, uh, the clear and the colour to dry. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in another little bit of clear over that colour that's missing. But we're going to do that once it's dry. So I'm going to force dry it with a heater. Let that dry for a minute, <coughs> and uh, and then we'll apply the clear coat over that that colour again, just to seal it all down and give it a bit of gloss. So we we can just fill all that in that area in with clear coat. Just go over this, going over that colour, making sure you're sealing this rusted area here. This rusted area uh, needs definitely needs clear to seal, you know, to keep out the. Uh, the air, the water, and any other of those uh, elements that will make that metal rust. So we seal down with the clear. Again, fits in the clear with the clear. There's a lot of uh, area there that's uh, looking, there's a couple of fractures here. We'll just put a bit of clear on there, filling those fractures up. It looks like a uh, uh, fiberglass fracture, the plastic fracture and the paint. And uh, you can actually, again, seal that in I'm just tidying it up with a clear coat all over again. Okay, that looks good there. Okay, we'll dry that off. We'll let that dry for a minute. And what I'll do is I'll... I'll uh, Get the uh, automotive touch-up uh, paint uh, top coat polish, and we'll just polish that off. So we'll let that flash off and dry for a minute. And here we are. 
are again uh, that uh, top coat polish. This is a polymer wax, uh, which is a little bit uh, of a better polish, we believe, and stays on for a, uh, uh, a while longer than ordinary polish than the Canova waxes and that. So we'll give that a good shake and we'll put it on. It's very, very liquidy, so you don't really need that much. And then you just put a little bit there on that polishing cloth. Okay, and then we can just proceed. I'm not going to polish over that area too much because it is, in fact, um, still custody. Each coat that we put on, you must allow ample time to dry. So it's a bit custody at the moment. And custody means where it's got a skin over the top, uh, and uh, but the inside is still soft. So we're just going to go over there, making sure that we don't uh, go on that painted area too much. You could very well let it dry uh, for a few hours before polishing and just to luster it all up. So we're just going to make this area here look like the best that we can by applying the polish over the area, like so. And uh, even down here. Just a little bit over there. That looks pretty good, that. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I haven't spent uh, a, a lot of money. We'll let that dry. And we'll take that wax off. It only takes a minute to dry the wax. Now that is an excellent spot repair. That's what we call a spot repair. Now uh, that's uh, that's as, as pretty much as good as you're going to be able to get a brush touch uh, using that formulation and that kit, which again is available at uh, touchuppaints.com.au. That's www.touchuppaints.com.au. Uh, go to the touch up product section and. Uh, in that area there, there's a section called the, uh, the touch-up paint kits, and that is BTKW37, that kit that does that. It's almost, again, a, a, a total paint maintenance kit, uh, which will keep your whole car looking good. Uh, the, the beauty of having that kit there is uh, that uh, you can fix any, item, any painted item or any car with the same kit. You only need to change uh, the colour. Uh, the products are universal. They are automotive products. But uh, anything that is painted, uh, you should be able to make good. Even a fridge, uh, a washing machine, or a, or a nice table at home, uh, anything like that. You just need to change the colour. And again, if it's a custom colour, you'll need to come into store, or one of our stores for a custom match. Um, there are a lot of kits there, and all those kits that are at that site uh, do do uh, certain types of scratches. Uh, one, what each in particular kit fixes uh, in particular types of uh, scratches and residues and whether it's a solid colour or, or a metallic colour, it's all relevant. But if you want a kit that does everything, that's the kit that does it. Uh, so uh, I thank you again for watching and uh, we'll see you at the, uh, at the next video uh, which will be uh, uh, doing a different type of scratch again. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, have a great uh, year. Thank you.